Hello, all you super geniuses out there. Welcome to another video lecture, Super Genius 99. And today we're going to focus on reading. So we did one, we did one um, video where we focused on outputting to the console. Now we're going to read from the console and have a little fun program at, up here. So if you're not aware about it, every key in computer has an ASCII value. So all the numbers have an ASCII value. All the letters have an ASCII value. And here's a chart right here. And so if you look over here, you'll see that the ASCII value of 1 is 49, 2 is 50, 3 is 51, and so forth. And so the code that I have here is basically taking the number and printing it to ASCII. So if I run it, enter integer. So I'm going to enter a single integer. Uh, let's, let's go for five. And so. 5 in ASCII is 53. We can go check the chart real quick. And you see right there, 5 ASCII value is 53. So this way this code works is I have a read. But because I have to hit the enter button, I need a... Um, I need to call read line to grab whenever you have a read and you hit enter. You know you have to hit enter for the for the information to go to the computer. But because you only read that first character, you didn't read the um, the return value. Then you have to either do another read or read line. I think read line is safer because it, it makes sure it reads everything including the return character. Okay. And then once again, I'm using formatting, the zero on this one. So the first element is I and then CH. So it puts it into the position of the string of text that we are printing out to the console. Okay, let's do another example. Moving right along, we have this mini program here. We are reading in string. So this one, it's reading in the string directly to directly to uh, the variable. So it actually put in a string, in this case, desired destination. And then it reads it into this variable. And then it asks you to read in your length of stay put in that variable, and then it'll output it in a formatted sentence you would like to stay at for length of time. So let's try and see what happens. Okay, so it's asking us for the desired destination. Let's put in Los Angeles. And how long do we want to stay? How about three weeks? Three weeks. And it says you would like to stay at Los Angeles for three weeks. Pretty simple, pretty easy to follow. Let's try another one. All right, so here we have another easy to follow program where we're going to convert the string input to an integer. So when you read a line, it automatically reads it as an int. When you use reline, it automatically reads it, excuse me, as a string. Okay. So reline just kind of takes whatever's whatever you just typed on the console right before you hit the enter button and it just converts it to a string so it's expecting a string on the other side okay so we give it a string 
We're going to call it string though. But we really want an integer. And this is kind of a safe way to read from the um to read from the console. There might be other other places where you want to make sure you use read or other types of reads. But this is pretty safe. Just read line, take it in, and then if you need to convert it to a double or a float or an integer, you can do so. And you can use int parse. So int parse, and just about all programming languages, including C Sharp, have a, have a way to parse. So int parse, it parses the string looking for an integer. That's what it does. It parses the string looking for an integer, and then it outputs it to this num over here, into an integer. And then we print out the number right in the console. So let's look at that. So it's asking us to put in an integer. Let's put in 37. And then it converts it and then puts it back out as the energy 37. Okay, pretty simple. We'll try one more number. Okay, so let's put in an integer. How about 86? And just parse it and spits it out. Okay, let's look at another example. Okay, so sometimes what may happen is the user puts in an invalid number and so rather than crashing the program you might give them a chance to put it in or you might just tell them the number's invalid and then you end the program uh, more gracefully than just you know an error popping up on the screen. So what I have here is using try parse so what try parse does is int to so what int try parse does is it parses the string looking for an integer. Okay. It parses the string, string num, and it looks for an integer. If it finds the integer, it'll put it in the int called num. It'll put it in the variable num. Okay. If it does not find a parse integer, it'll return a false value and go down here and, and output invalid number. If it does find it, and this, this is true, it parses it, it returns true, and then it, um, it'll output the string. So let's, let's look at an example. So let's start off by putting in an invalid number. Okay, I'm going to put an invalid. This will be a non-numerical value. Okay, non-numerical. I hit enter. It lets me know it's an invalid number. Now let's try a valid number. Okay, I'm trying a valid number. And there it recognizes it as a valid number. So that try parse comes in handy if you give the user the ability to put in anything in the input. Because when you're using a console, or if you're developing like a Windows form and you have a text box, and you don't limit the text box to numbers only, then a person can put in letters or numbers. And so you have to check. And let's try another thing. Okay, so here I replace my number, my int, with the float. So float also has a float try parse. So it parses a string looking for a float. If it finds it, then it'll continue uh, in the block of code when everything is correct. If it doesn't find it, then it'll go to the block of code if it is invalid. So let's try this. Okay, so now we're going to in a floating point number. So 
So I'm in 123.69. And that is a valid float. Floating point number. Okay, so that, can, that concludes it for this little segment of writing to the console. Super Genius 99, thank you for watching.